In this video, we're going to talk about the most missed questions on our most recent unit test that included weather, plate tectonics, and topographic maps. As you watch this video, I'm going to be giving you numbers and or letters to form a code. You will use this code to get into the test corrections into Schoology. Um, as we're moving through this video, if I give you a number or a letter, please write that down and you will use that then to enter it in to Schoology to open up the test corrections. Okay, so this first question that we're going to go over is dealing with convection. And so it says heat energy from the sun and heat energy from a radiator, radiator are similar in that. And so really what this is looking at is convection currents. And so remember when I have hot and I have cold, what I'm going to see are convection. And I can see this in... Um, the ocean, I can see it in the air, I can see it in the mantle. So remember that hot air, water, or fluid is going to rise. And the reason that it's going to rise is because it is less dense. So because it doesn't have a whole lot of density, it is going to rise. But as it rises, it's going to start cooling off and it's going to gain density and it is going to sink back down because it has high density cold air water fluid is going to sink so when i look at this question we're talking about heat and something that's hot so if it is hot air water or fluid it is going to rise and the reason it's going to rise is because it is less dense so when i look at my answer choices i can see that it is going to be D. Energy from both causes air molecules to decrease in density, expand, and then rise. So the first letter of your code that you're going to enter in to um, open up the test corrections, it's actually going to be a number and not a letter. It is 8. Okay, our next question says the map shows some of Earth's plate tectonic boundaries. Based on the map, which location would I most likely have volcanic activity? So we know that we are going to see volcanic activity when we have oceanic crust getting forced under continental crust. And the result of that convergent boundary will cause volcanoes um, right there on the land. So we are looking for a convergent boundary. So if I look over here, I see that convergent boundaries are noted with this little dotted line. So I see a convergent boundary right here. So my answer is going to be Z. The next letter in your code is 6. Okay. Our next question, number 14, says a mid-ocean ridge separates the Pacific Plate and the Nazca Plate off the western coast of South America, and it wants to know which best describes the relative motions of the Pacific and Nazca Plates. So the first thing I notice in this image is that it says right here, is a mid-ocean ridge. So because I have a mid-ocean ridge and I know that mid-ocean ridges are formed at divergent boundaries, my Pacific plate is going to have to move this way and then that means my Nazca plate is going to have to move the other direction um, because divergent means that it is separating. So the Nazca plate will move east, the Pacific plate will move west. I can use this little um, key right here to help me with that. And so I'm going to read through my answer choices. And I see that this one says the Pacific plate is moving west, which is true. And the Nazca plate is moving east. That is also true. Okay, the next letter in your code is going to be 7. Okay, our next question is going to be number 7. And number seven talks about seafloor spreading. So I want to remind you that seafloor spreading is happening at the bottom of the ocean 
where I have oceanic crust separating from oceanic crust. And what happens is the mantle or that magma comes up and fills in the gap. And we call that a magma upwelling. And we see lateral expansion, which just means that the plates are moving away from each other. And when this occurs, the type of landform that we're going to see is an ocean ridge. So right here that checks. So we have the magma coming up. We have lateral expansion, which just means that the plates are separating. And we see our landform, which is the Atlantic Ridge. And so our correct answer here is D. So the next letter in your code will be five. Okay, our next question is looking at this topographic map. It wants us to determine what the elevation of Z is. So we're not actually finding the difference in elevation here. All we're doing is calculating what point Z would be. So I look and I see that this particular line right here is 1,120. And I see that I have a contour interval of 20. So I'm just counting up by 20s. So this line right here will be 1,140, which makes the line that Z is on 1,160. Okay, the next letter in your code is three. All right, in this question, it's asking us to look at the satellite map and it wants us to determine what is going to be the most likely effect if there is a fire in this area um, where the river is and in 12 months what would we see so if i have a fire in this area what's going to happen is a lot of the vegetation a lot of the trees a lot of the grass um, is going to be burned down and so the trees and the grass and the weeds and all of the other vegetation that is there that's holding the sediment in place is no longer going to be there. So in 12 months, we're going to see more sediment moving into the area because the vegetation that was once holding it in place is no longer there. So we're going to see more sediment flowing into the river because the fire destroyed the vegetation that was there. So it is going to be C. The next uh, number in your code is going to be zero. All right, in our next question, we see that scientists believe that the land masses of the Earth were once joined together, forming one huge supercontinent called Pangaea. Over time, the land masses gradually drifted apart uh, to reach their present day location. Okay, so our key word here is least. So which of these provide the least support for this theory? So the first piece of um, evidence that scientists provided um, for this idea of continental drift is rock evidence. And so part of rock evidence is this idea that landforms are matching up on different continents. The other part of rock evidence though is that glaciers that used to exist but no longer exist. When I look at this next choice right here, this is saying glaciers that are currently existing at the North and South Pole. This is not part of rock evidence. So if I'm looking for one that least supports it, this one right here will be my answer. But I do want to look at the other two choices just to make sure. So we have rock evidence that does not include uh, currently existing glaciers at the North and South Pole. Um, we also have fossil evidence, and so this is going to be talking about plant and animal fossils being found on different continents where we would not expect to see those types of animals or plants. And then the last one is that the continents appear to fit together like puzzle pieces. So this uh, A is going to be evidence, C is going to be evidence, D is going to be evidence, however B, glaciers that are currently existing at the North and South Pole, that is not going to be evidence of continental drift. The next digit in your code is going to be nine. 
The last question that we're going to look at is about rift valleys. And we know that a rift valley is formed when we have continental crust diverging or separating from continental crust. So this is happening on land. Um, and it wants to know basically what is the motion that we're going to see. Well, we just described that it is happening at a, at a divergent boundary. So we see that the two types of crust are moving away from each other. So the answer here is going to be C. Rift valleys form where two plates move away from each other. Okay, um, there is not a digit uh, or a letter for your code for this particular uh, question. So you have received a seven digit code from the rest of the questions that are in this test. You can now use that to go into Schoology and unlock the test corrections. If you need to come back and reference this video, please do. You should be getting all of the questions that I went over in this video correct in your test corrections. If you do not make 100 on the first attempt of your test correction, I will give you a second attempt. Um, so please make sure you're going through and reviewing what you've missed. If you have questions about a specific question that I have not gone over, please come talk to me so that I can help you understand what the answer to that is so that you can get it correct.